progress, business is slowing down, team is shrinking. Uh, we are not dead, but we also not alive. So as a founder of a startup, I give a piece of advice to all of my team members. Uh, you know, like the the ship is sinking, so a lot of them left their company and left me alone again back in social mission. Uh, throughout these like four or five years, we have done few solar uh, rural empowerment social mission. So one of my friends invited me to give talk about solar energy rural empowerment to my corp which is a youth-based organization under Minister of Ministry of Youth. So their mission is to go to Africa, four countries, and I was there to give a talk about solar energy. On top of that, my friend also asked me whether I can sponsor a solar energy system or maybe can sponsor five. I told him that I do have leftover stock from our inventory. So we contributed 160 solar panels to the team. You can see all of the team members are posing and cheering except for the middle guy who's thinking whether I can turn the solar panel into cash or not or I'm supposed to turn it into cash or not Then another problem that arises <coughs> since they are implementing in four countries Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya and Sudan I cannot go to all of these uh, four countries First, it's very costly and also they are doing this mission at the same time So to solve this problem I convinced the team for them to be the installer, to assemble the system. So this is the session where I taught them to assemble a basic solar energy system or solar lights with all of the team members. All of them looks very convincing and try to believe in what I say except for this video. I'm not sure whether <laughs> she's standing or too skeptical or whatever. All right, and then after that, uh, we provided the solar panel. So this is very basic. Uh, system. It consists of, you can see this is 10 watt solar panel and also a USB C grid connector. If you can recognize it when you put in your C uh, grid connector for USB charger in your car, we use it. This is for to convert from 12 volt to 5 volt and then you can use power bank to light up a USB powered uh, light. From, sorry, you said from 12 volts to? 12 volt to 5 volt. Yeah, the solar panel is 12 volt. The system that we want to use is fiber because we want to use power bank. Uh, back in the days, it was, very, it was very hard for us to use 12 volt battery. Firstly, it's very costly, and also they cannot uh, bring it in uh, flight. Mm -hmm. So they, each of them, there are 40 of them. Each of them bring four power banks, and they declare it's for their setup, the power bank. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, and so I need to put some disclaimer. I never thought them to use this kitchen knife to do wire stripping or wire cutting. <laughs> yeah, so this is the car cigarette USB connector where they connect with the wire and they connect directly to the solar panel. From here, you can get 5 volt power to charge your power bank and you can use your power bank. This is the implementation in Zanzibar, Tanzania, where they bring 40. There are four teams of them. They bring, each of the team bring 40 solar foam solutions. This is an implementation in Kenya, again in Tanzania. This was done with uh, MyCorp, right? Yeah, MyCorp. Uh, they just bring our solution. <coughs> we just teach them how to install, to assemble. Right. And then they go there, they teach the local villages to install and assemble the system themselves. Yeah. So the transfer of uh, knowledge transfer is there. And again, also this is in uh, Kenya. All right. So. From this occasion that Solar Energy 101 uh, started, from our experience, it was very hard to do social mission about solar energy. We call it touch and go. It's very easy for you to bring a solar energy solution, go there, take safety, put it in the Facebook, and then you can go, and you don't know whether the system works or not. We really don't like that kind of approach. We want to make sure that the system works as it's supposed to be. Our target, at least the system should last at least one year. So the main hurdle of doing this is the mobilization cost. You can imagine if you go to one village with 60 houses to do the installation for 60 houses in one time. The cost for installation is almost 30% of the solar energy system. Let's say if we provide a system worth of 1,000 ringgit, 300 will be for installation. And it's going to take us like a month. You can imagine if I go to Africa, I just 
stay there for like three or four months just to do it so they like so it's not practical then the second thing is the sustainability again let me repeat we don't want a touch and go concept uh, basis that's where we really believe in uh, transferring the knowledge for them to ever to be able to install and to maintain the system themselves this is the actual picture from our implementation back in January 2018 in uh, Postlanda. So I think you all heard this so many times, right? So for us at Solar Energy 101, this is our quote. Give a man a solar home system, it will last until it breaks down. If you teach a man to install solar, you will empower them for a lifetime. What is <coughs> innovativeness in our approach? Okay, in terms of the technical, I should say there's no normal um, technical <coughs> pattern or any invention here. The only difference that we do here is the approach and the implementation. So this is the implementation of 60 houses in Aboriginal village in Kuala Lumpur, Pahang. Uh, luckily we got sponsored by MTDC, Malaysian Technology Development Corporation, to sponsor all houses in the one village. We started with providing a full complete package. Full means all of the loose components, solar panel, battery, solar controller, lights, wire, all these small components, including the tools, the uh, wire cutter, wire stripper, test pan, everything. So it's like uh, one school bag for each family. And then we make it the system practical. The, our solar energy system, we make it fully DC, direct current. We don't use inverter at all, alternating current, for three reasons. Number one, uh, inverter is very expensive to get a good one also is very expensive like for this kind of system it's almost uh, 1000 ringgit whereas the whole system is already 1000 ringgit mm -hmm. and then the second thing we don't want them to play around with AC AC is very dangerous and thirdly um, if you use inverter there will be conversion loss it means that we need to compensate with a bigger solar energy system so we want to avoid this and last but not least, it is self-sustained. When the beneficiary installs the system themselves, they know which component should do which function and which wire should go to which socket. We don't want them to not to use the system just because one loose wire. It's going to be a total uh, wastage for them and for us as well. This is a completed uh, system installed by the villagers themselves in the village. By the way, the system that we provide to them consists of uh, three lights. We recommended uh, them to use around four to five hours every night and also USB charger. They can charge any USB based uh, gadgets or appliances. Even though they don't have any uh, coverage, network coverage there, but they still use uh, phone for video and game. The impact that we, bring, we brought to them, firstly, there's no operation cost. Okay, for them, every night they have to spend one minute 50 cent to buy fuel. Here in Asia, they don't use kerosene uh, and other things. They use cooking oil, palm oil cooking oil. So they bought a kg of uh, cooking oil for 3 minutes 50 cents. Even though it's subsidized at 2 minutes 50 cents, just because the distance, they have to pay 3 minutes 50 cents. Every night, they have to use one third of the 1 kg uh, palm, uh, cooking oil just to use for the lantern. They use uh, old used cloth as the wick, and then that's the light that they get. Then they get night operation hours. With our recommended hours of four to five hours, father can do post uh, economic activity like uh, sorting, grading the harvested yield or be it rubber, bamboo, or even some of them uh, raised ducks and also chicken. And then the mom can do housework, and of course the children can study do their homeworks. No emission at all. This is also the real picture from the house. They use three main conventional sources. Number one, generator, if they can afford it. Uh, if it, the house is close enough, they will have one generator and share to buy the generator and for the fuel as well. Secondly, they will use uh, candle, paraffin wax candle. Thirdly, they will use just now, uh, the cooking oil lantern. So from our study, 60 houses every year, they will save 10 tons of carbon emission. Okay, that will be the environmental impact. On the health impact, they will reduce 90% of health risks uh, related to respiratory, especially when they use the paraffin wax um, candle. It's quite dangerous. 
but the study on paraffin wax is not so broad as kerosene. Yep. For that project, we have won Best National of Grid Solar Project for 2018, awarded by MESTEC, Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Climate Change. So from January 2018 until now, these are our beneficiaries. Another 30 fam uh, families in Tasik Chini Pahang, also Aboriginal uh, community. This is the basic system, like the one we uh, mobilized in uh, Africa. Another 120 families in Long Busan, Sarawak. This is by far the deepest rural place that I've been. It's a six hours off-road journey from Kapit town, almost to the border of uh, Kalimantan Union Shirari. Then uh, the five families in Kuala Tahan, also a regional uh, community. Uh, this is quite recent, uh, early this year in Gurik Perak. They provided seven solar lights for our family. It's a very small village. But we did also installation here where we put solar powered elephant deterrent. We use solar powered speaker with <coughs> rolling tiger sound to deter elephant from coming to their crops and whatnot. This is the implementation plan for next month, early next month in Sandakan Sabah. It's a water village. Around three to four villages we will receive again. NTDC is willing to sponsor to do CSR together with us. Uh, we will provide the same solar home system, in, uh, including three lights, USB charger to the, this village. All right. In terms of feasibility, sorry, running a social enterprise, doing the social part is very easy. But to sustain it as an enterprise is the hardest part, you know, to make it as a business. So we, even though we do like this kind of competition, grant, uh, fund, and also donation, our main source of re the revenue for our social initiative is from our commercial project. We do for vehicle, vehicle including food trucks, camper van, four wheel drive car. We even uh, put solar on bus. Then we do road furniture, street lights, charging station and also uh, bus stop and starting last year we start to involve in self-consumption building we are targeting hospital shopping mall um, and also building that operate 24 hours or every day in order to reduce their consumption this is for our long-term plan to get a stable income or stable revenue for every month from that revenue we channel towards our social initiative which is the oblique community in Southeast Asia. It is called cross subsidization. I think if you all heard about Tom's shoe, that you buy one pair, they will give another pair to beneficiaries. Uh, so it's quite the same model here. So our equation is every one kilowatt peak that we install, we make sure there will be another 10 beneficiaries on the social side that we will receive our solution. Here in ASEAN, we still have 65 million ASEAN people living without electricity. We have another 100 million living without stable electricity. So the total potential is around 165. Our second plan is to implement a pay per use model where we can put a, like a controller where they can pay to buy a credit to activate the system. But in order to do that, we definitely need a coverage, network coverage. Uh, so we just put our footprint all to all these places and then we are waiting for the right time to implement the second round. Alright, this is our team, me and the interns. And Pama is also one of the beneficiary. Uh, he's <laughs> selling ice cream on the motor cart. So he needs to rely on closest shop or building for electricity. So we found out about Pama on online. So we provide the solar system. The best part about Pama is when we met him, he's using one motocard. Now he has three motocards and two bicycles mm -hmm. selling ice cream. And he's doing well with ice cream. Yeah, if you, and I need to promote about ice cream as well. Okay. It's a homemade ice cream, coconut homemade ice cream, based in Damansara Damai. Yeah, okay, that will be all for me. Thank you.